Hi, my name is Philip King and welcome to this tutorial series on writing a WordPress plugin. Since each of the tutorials in this series builds on each other, I recommend you progress through the tutorials in the order they are presented. All the code for these tutorials will be shown in the videos, but obviously you cannot copy the code using cut and paste from a video. So a text version of the code, along with the videos and a PDF version of the series, is available on my website. The link is shown below. In previous lessons we covered the introduction to plugins and the naming and declaration of a WordPress plugin. In this lesson we'll introduce our WordPress plugin class. This class can be used as a basis for all your plugins, but more on that later. We'll also cover some WordPress recommendations and general ideas about plugin development, plus several tasks our plugin will need to accomplish when interfacing with WordPress. Plugins can be developed using two methods, using individual functions or by wrapping the functions in a class using an object-oriented approach. In these tutorials we will be using the latter method and developing our own plugin class. First, a quick word about WordPress coding standards. WordPress is working to improve its coding standards by helping users maintain a consistent style so everyone's code can be clean and easy to read at a glance. The full WordPress coding standards can be found at the WordPress Codex. Some of the main points worth noting are No camel case text to be used Never use shorthand PHP start and end tags Always use full PHP tags Remove all trailing white space after closing PHP tags Remove trailing spaces at the end of each line of code. Use lowercase letters in variable and function names with words separated using underscores. Files, folders or directories should be named descriptively using lowercase letters with words separated using hyphens. Class file names should be based on the class name with the word class prepended and the underscores in the class name replaced with hyphens. Don't use clever coding. Readability is more important than cleverness or brevity. Use tabs and not spaces for indentation. OK, let's insert a little more code for our plugin. We'll begin by creating a plugin class structure to hold our code. Why have a class structure rather than just PHP files? Well, having a PHP class avoids all the problems we could have from naming collisions with other WordPress plugins and our own code. So to avoid naming collisions, all plugins should incorporate a PHP class structure. Here's the outline for the code we will be using to set up our plugin class structure. This code first checks for the existence of a class named PK Plugin Test Class, and if the class doesn't exist, the class is created. Notice the placeholders within the class for variable declarations, the class constructor, and other functions. We will be using these placeholders later. We next need to instantiate or create an instance of the class. This code checks that the class is available and then creates an instance of the class. If we were to activate the plugin now, an instance of our class would be created, but of course nothing would happen, as we haven't told it to do anything. That's where actions and filters come into the equation. OK, let's add our plugin class to our plugin file. Open the PK Plugin Class PHP file in the WP Content Plugins PK Plugin Class folder using your favorite text editor. I'm using the PDT Eclipse IDE. Then append our plugin class to the end of the file. I'm going to use cut and paste to save time. If you need the header code, you will find its details in the previous lesson. Now that we have our class, Let's check everything is working by entering the customary hello world code. The first thing we need to do is enter the hello world function. This would be classed as a core function, so it should be placed after the comment, enter actions and filter methods here. The hello world function we are using for our test will do nothing more than output the text PK plugin class test 
dash hello world at the top of any page using the WordPress init hook. Next we need to enter the WordPress init action hook that will call our hello world function. This is a WordPress action hook so needs to be placed after the comment enter plugin actions and filters here. And that's everything we need for a fully functional plugin. Save the file and let's go see if it works. Open your browser and log in as administrator to WordPress. We need to activate our plugin, so select the installed plugins hyperlink. Locate our plugin and select the activate hyperlink. Presuming WordPress shows no errors, our text PK plugin class hello world should be shown at the top of every WordPress page that calls the init action hook. Okay, let's take a look at our blog. Click the blog page hyperlink. At the top of the page should be the text PK plugin class hello world. Well, everything seems to be working, so let's deactivate the plugin. Then remove the hello world code from our plugin's PHP file. This code will no longer be required for the rest of the lessons. And save the file ready for our next lesson. Well that's all for this tutorial on creating a WordPress plugin class. See you in the next lesson when we will start implementing more plugin hooks, actions and filters.